Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today we're going to look at changing careers. Think enabling professional people to think outside a professional box. So first of all, we'll look at this diagram, which I call the POPB analysis. So it's a little bit of a Boston matrix, but looks at the factors that you need to, to, to deal with. So first of all, we've got the pull factors, factors that are attracting you to your new professional field. The opportunities, how do you get into your new professional field? The push factors, what's driving you away from where you were and the barriers that you will need to overcome to get into your professional field. And the creature in the middle is push me, pull you from Dr. Doolittle. Push factors. Well, you've been reasonably successful at what you were. Uh, you've uh, kind of enjoyed it, but you are moving on. So what's driving you away? Is it because your industry is declining? Is it because the company that you work for is going into a bad, bad place? Is it because you're no longer enjoying what you're doing? Is it because it no longer aligns with the values that you have? Is it just something where you, staying in that particular field is not realistically the right thing for you anymore? Was in the past, not anymore. What's pulling you into your new field? So what's attracting you? Why do you want to be an X, whatever X is? Does it match your new skills? Does it match your values? Is it something you've always emotionally wanted to do but weren't able to do for whatever reason. So again, demonstrating the pull factors, what's drawing you here is a very important factor that people need to demonstrate. Opportunities. Well, how do you get into a new field? Is it retraining? Are there options to uh, where companies take on people with uh, transferable skills? Is a lateral move possible? Now, a lady called Jacqueline Conway, a British uh, coach, came up with an idea of a sideways possible. So for example, let's say you're engin an engineer who likes training. Well, and wants to be a training officer, learning and development. Then you can train engineers and then move slowly or moderately quickly into the training field. So look at things that are sideways possible. Relatively small steps away from where you are now, rather than radical shifts. It's also an easier sell to the hiring manager moving forward. And then barriers. Well, what are the obstacles that are there in the way of reaching a goal and how do you overcome them? So looking at do you have the appropriate skills, do you have the appropriate experience, can you convince somebody to give you the opportunities? This is a story of a particular type of barriers that people face. It's based on a story by a friend of mine called Sarah Cooper, who's a fellow volunteer at Career Springboard. She's a professional recruiter, has run both her agencies and is also uh, a recruitment chief recruitment manager for a, uh, a British company at the moment. And Azu's hiring manager asked for an Estonian-speaking ice skating leopard. They wanted a new attraction, so went to the recruiter and said, I want an Estonian-speaking ice skating leopard. So a variety of feline candidates are applied. Leopard showed up. Uh, leopard, uh, she could uh, roller skate, she could ice skate, she spoke Lithuanian, and she spoke Polish. But Azu's hiring manager said, ah, I want an Estonian-speaking ice skating leopard. Okay. Then a tiger showed up. The tiger could ice skate, the tiger could snowboard, the tiger spoke Estonian and Finnish. Now, nah, one Estonian speaking ice skating leopard. A jaguar showed up. Can you tell the difference between a jaguar and a leopard? Well, not until they're so close that it's actually very scary. And the jaguar could ice skate, snowboard and roller skate and speak Estonian and speak Latvian. Now, nah, one Estonian speaking ice skating leopard. A lion showed up, okay, big cat, not very spotty, but they could ice skate, they could ski jump, they could speak Estonian and Hungarian. Nah, one Estonian speaking ice skating leopard. So convincing a hiring manager of your potential and your capabilities is a challenge, particularly when they're focused on an immediate problem here and now, and maybe relatively narrow-minded because they've only ever really dealt with Estonian speaking ice skating leopards. It's a challenge, and no, I don't know what the answer is, but it's a challenge that we need to look at. Another factor for career shifters is culture shock. Now, it's a normal process that happens when you move away from where you were, mostly found on expats and immigrants. I came to Britain at the age of 10, didn't speak any English, had to rapidly adjust. And culture shock also happens to people when they leave an organisation where they've been for a very long time. Uh, it's... Also, when a new organization is quite different to the old one, everything is different. Everything is strange. And there's a need to adjust to what's happening. 
need to understand and need to get support from their family, their friends, etc. That, that are there. So a culture shock is there and people need to be aware of, what, of it and be able to deal with it. A few weeks ago, there was an interesting interview with an American lady called Danielle Del Martino Booth. And she was talking about career change amongst a lot of other things. And one of them was that having the right attitude is crucial. So I'll take that aboard and build a little bit on what three different types of people that, uh, that have that. And the three different types of people are immigrants, refugees, and exiles. A career change immigrant is somebody that really wants to be in a new place. Not a Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island. If anyone has ever been to New York, Ellis Island is something I'd heartily recommend visiting. These people are looking forward to their new promised land. They're leaving the past behind because the past wasn't that great. They're building an identity in the new world. This is now their home. And the past will be, the past was not that great. The future will be better. The refugees are people who've had to move on from their past lives, but are now looking to the future. Yeah, the past was painful. Some of it was great, but they've been through a painful traumatic event. But they're looking to build a future, looking forward, and they're grateful for a safe new home because they've gone away from the persecution, they've gone away from the trouble. They're adjusting, yeah, they miss some things about their home, but then they're thriving because the future is brighter. And then you have the exiles. These are people who've normally had a comfortable life, a relatively high position, who've been forced to leave it, and they miss it every day. They have trouble adjusting because it's been such a painful experience and the trauma hasn't gone away from them yet. And they're hoping to return to their home, which may never come. So if you are changing career, be an immigrant, look to the future. But if you're not an immigrant, if you've left because of uh, circumstances, be a refugee. Say, this is the future, this is now, the future will be better and I will thrive in it. So developing a steps to your new career. So yeah, this is project management, but kind of helpful. A lot easier said than done, but we see where we are. So explore, what are possibilities open to you? Then assess, what you're good at, what do you like doing? What's the right thing for you? How much your values, how much of the values matches your interests? Then research, how do I get into this field? Which are the companies that are operating near me? How do I get the training education? Gathering, analyzing information, then filtering. How does this profession tally with what you've actually do? It's sometimes harder because you need to close. Once you've opened things up, you now need to start closing things down. Then marketing, developing a skill-based CV, networking, getting advice, application for jobs, showing where you are. And action, finding specific roles, looking for network-based job market, meeting people, looking for alternative routes in to convince people of the skills that you have and what you can offer their particular organization. But most importantly, resilience and attitude. Sometimes it might be a difficult sell, but if you don't have a goal, you ain't going to have a goal come through. So developing a story, selling a story, growing and winning. Thank you very much.